Okay, I think we can get started. Um, hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, if it's morning for you, it's morning for me. Um, I'm Natalie Leonard. I am um, one of the organizers of this year's Architecture Beyond Capitalism um, School for 2022, and we're excited to be here and to welcome you all here today. Um, and just to acknowledge, um, I'll be helping present this morning as well as Jessica, Peggy, Andrea, and Ronak, and you'll see them here on the call. Um, and, and we have some other members too of the organizing group here on the call. Um, and so it's good to see some familiar faces and some, some new faces. Um, so uh, just a quick intro of ABC 2022. Um, this is our, our second annual Architecture Beyond Capitalism School. Um, we did a first annual session last summer that had a pretty different format from this year's session. Um, and so last year's session really focused on understanding the capitalist structures that helped define architecture education. Um, but this year is, is really trying to, to dig into developing some strategies that will lead to change. So we're excited for um, the workshop and participatory nature of this year, and, and we hope that we can get some great outcomes from this. Um, and then if we want, Jessica, you can go to the next slide for me here. Awesome. And then I will also quickly acknowledge and thank all the faces and people who put a lot of hours into getting ready for this year's session. Um, this is hosted by the Architecture Lobby um, and the Academia Working Group, and there are plenty of people um, who I've listed here who have helped really just make this school successful, um, and we're excited uh, for this to, to finally be here happening, so thank you to everyone who's, who's mentioned here on the slide. And you can go to the next one for me here. Um, and then again, we are all part of the architecture lobby. Um, so I've been with the architecture lobby since I was a student at Michigan. Um, I am also now the finance coordinator of the lobby. Um, so uh, a lot of us have, I think, multiple different hats and, and are involved in a lot of different initiatives. Um, but if you have not heard of the architecture lobby, we are an international organization of architectural workers, planners, and designers who advocate for the value of architecture in the general public um, and for architectural work within the discipline. Um, we have a lot of different chapters across the United States and across the world. Um, some of those are associated with universities, some are just associated with geographic areas. Um, and we have both uh, those chapters and working groups. Working groups uh, kind of um, are, are created from people from all over who you don't have to be a part of a chapter to be in a working group, um, like ours, academia. Um, and there's uh, some really great efforts happening. So Green New Deal and unionization um, and just different work going on here. So that's a little blurb about them. And we encourage you all, if you have questions, you can reach out to us about joining. You can go next, thank you. All right, so I'm here to deliver all the admin details for this week. Um, and if we have questions, we'll get to those at the end. Um, so first, just some Zoom etiquette. We do ask if y'all are comfortable with it to please have your video on. It is nice to, to talk to other people, even though we're all virtual. Um, but we do encourage you to, to take breaks, um, get a snack, get a beverage. Um, if you need to step away to do any of those things, we do ask that you just turn your video off if you step away. Um, the next part here is we encourage you to add your pronouns as part of your Zoom name. So this graphic on the right shows you how to do that. So what you would do is open that participant panel um, by clicking on participants at the bottom of your screen. Um, if you hover over your name, you can select more um, and then you can select rename. Um, and then you're able to adjust your name how you'd like um, and you can add your pronouns that way to your Zoom name. Um, and then next, uh, we ask that you respect the person speaking, keep chat to everyone to a minimum. Um, and similar to this, try to mute your microphone when you're not speaking. Um, and then I wanna introduce a concept called the progressive stack. Um, this is how we at the lobby try to facilitate large group discussions. Um, so how it'll work is you open the chat and type in the word stack, S-T-A-C-K, 
Um, and one of us who's moderating the session will call on you in a progressive order. So the first person who has typed in stack will be called on first, and the second person second, so on and so forth. Um, and we'll try to keep to that method uh, throughout the workshops this week. Um, and again, if there are questions, we can kind of talk about those at the end. All right, next slide, please. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then more kind of uh, logistic related things. We will be recording these workshops. Um, the workshop today is recorded. Workshops later will be recorded. Um, these will be shared with folks who have registered for the school. Um, and so with that, we ask that when you're registering for a workshop, there's a little thing that says, I understand and I consent to this. Um, when you join the Zoom call, there's a little thing that says, I consent to this. Um, if there are concerns about privacy, I encourage you in that case to keep your video off and you can use again that rename feature to give yourself whatever type of descriptor you'd like um, if you do not want your full name or your, your name to be included in these types of recordings. So um, again, they will be recorded, they will be shared with folks who have registered. Next slide, please, thank you. Okay, um, and then I think lastly here, just some discussion guidelines. So please acknowledge, use, and respect people's pronouns. Please use I statements. So don't assume that you're speaking for others. Don't assume that others might have the same thoughts or opinions as you. Um, please try to listen carefully to what other people are saying in these conversations. Assume that they have good faith and positive intent in what they're sharing. Um, respect the spirit of the progressive stack. Um, so just respect that we'll, we'll go in order, um, you know, try to step up and step back with, with talking. Um, and then also to respect the agenda and folks' time. Um, and these types of meetings and organizing is messy and that is a-okay, it's allowed to be. So we're excited about all of that. Um, I think that kind of concludes housekeeping. So we can go to the next slide here. Hi, I'm, I'm Peggy Deemer, she, her, and I'm just gonna be talking a bit about the background um, that has led up to this 2022 workshop. Um, just to say, when some of us were asked in 20, 2020 by the Architecture Lobby Organizing Committee to start an academia caucus to consider the role that the academy plays in producing an ineffectual and unrewarded architectural worker, we recognize that architecture schools do not teach what and how they ethically could and should. We considered not just what was missing in architecture education, but wanted to address the larger question of architecture's culpability in capitalism. How can we, um, how can a revamped architecture education to generate a more activist, critical and socially committed architect? Next, please. In other words, if capitalism is a system by which Western and white supremacy was established and now perpetuated, what might architecture beyond capitalism be like? What educational steps are required to get there? While we initially considered different scales of steps, immediate hacking actions in existing programs, a summer school, an entirely new school, we settled on establishing a summer school, one that was virtual because of COVID, but which had the huge advantage of gathering participants from all over the world. And this yielded the ABC School 2021. Next, please. We settled on a six week program that would cover what we felt were the three fundamental themes of a more ideal education capitalism, labor, and collectives. Next, please. Each theme was given two weeks in that summer school the first for speakers and discussion the second for salons that considered the results of the theme related assignments. Assignments that were done on Miro board by participants either collectively, people having met um, during the previous speaker session um, or individually. Next please. The school was amazing. We had 477 applicants, 233 offered participant spots, um, 214 offered auditor spots, just to talk about that difference. We felt it was very important, kind of intrinsic to uh, the 2021 school to participate in the assignments. And so there was a strict 
designation between those that were agreeing to really work and put forward work in those assignments and those that were not, which were the registered auditors. Um, we knew that subsequent summer schools would address more specific topics after this initial broad picture, but we also learned from it we since too long and too deferential, too, too deferential to standard academic tropes, which is to say speakers, assignments, crits. Next, please. I'm not sure exactly how we got to this theme and um, of studio, um, but it stemmed from debates about the success of the assignments from the 2021 school, which were like studio production. They created charts, power, power maps, but not really. In any case, there was a general consensus, and I would say a quick consensus, that studio teaching was the quintessential symbol of an architectural education and the most open to critique. And we shortened the summer school to one week, which we are initiating here, hoping to avoid the falling off of participation that we had seen in 2021 over those six weeks. And more fundamentally, en route to organizing the structure of this week, we realized that we academia organizers didn't want to um, just follow the top-down approach of producing a school. We will put on display what you should really know about studio and instead follow a bottom-up approach. What can the ground up, uh, on the ground students, educators and practitioners offer as insights about how studio can change? Hence, the invitation for facilitators to come forward and lead sessions for which we would arrange a forum. Hence, architecture, Studio Workshop 2022. Jessica. Thanks, Peggy. I'm Jessica Garcia Fritz. Um, I'm also one of the organizers for ABC 2022. And uh, as, as Peggy was mentioning, um, one of the aspects of the school this year is that it is participatory and built from the ground up. And in order to do that, we defined um, specific roles and relationships among those roles in, in order to establish the structure and the framework for the school this year. Um, and primarily the, the three roles, um, there are others, are they manifested as um, an organizer, facilitator, and participant role. And I'm going to discuss a little bit about what those, uh, those roles entail, as well as some of the responsibilities. So the, the organizers are, um, a few of us that are here, um, you will see them in the sessions. They have and continue to coordinate the structure and logistics of the workshops and the, the sessions. So they've been ver working very closely with the facilitators. And the facilitators have um, and continue to uh, propose concepts and frameworks for the discussion. So they're really setting the pace of each workshop. Um, and they also propose how the format of each workshop will work, and um, and they work very closely with the the organizers. The participants are all of us who are currently here right now, including the organizers and facilitators. So all of us are uh, are will be actively engaged in the discussions and in, in the workshops. Uh, so um, the idea is that um, by the end of this, we'll have a collection of, of workshops in which everyone has been able to contribute via discussion. Andrea. Thank you. Um, so this first part is just uh, talking a little bit about the schedule at large. Um, and in order to actually access the schedule, everyone needs to be able to access the Luma platform. Um, so you can see here that you uh, register um, for all of the events via this link here at the top of the page. Um, and everyone can do that um, throughout the entire week. Um, so it doesn't matter um, if you've already signed up or not at this point, you can basically um, encourage friends and um, colleagues to continue to enroll all the way up through individual events. Um, and this uh, particular link will then take you to a homepage. Um, and from that homepage, you can see all of the events that are taking place over the course of the week. Um, I think we can open up Luma at the end of the session um, and walk folks through it if there are any questions. 
Um, so for right now, though, um, what you need to know is that uh, within that long list of events, we've got about 20 uh, individual workshops happening over the course of this week. So the 18th through the 23rd, that includes uh, this opening plenary um, and a closing plenary next Saturday. Um, and we've got topics that are covered uh, across architecture education, um, all somehow tied to this notion of studio um, and uh, should be very good conversation. Um, next slide, please. So also within the Luma platform, um, if you look onto the left-hand side of your profile page, you'll have a few options. Um, in the library category that's highlighted on this visual, um, there are resources that you can access for the various workshops. Um, and those are things that may grow as the week continues and it will continue to be a sort of archive of um, activities that have happened over the course of the week. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so the important thing about um, this week is that we need to hold on to this concept of workshop. Um, these are not classes, um, and that's really important. Um, there are a lot of uh, issues within architecture education, uh, very many and complex, um, and we want as many people involved in trying to work through those things as possible. Um, there's uh, no uh, expertise that we're um, really trying to hold on to here. We're all trying to think of ourselves as um, new and uncertain about a lot of the work that has to go forward. Um, and that's something that we like to hold on to um, in the ac academia working group as well. Um, so there'll be some messy moments, there'll be some beautiful moments, um, but in general, everyone is trying to come together and take on topics that were um, either like not bridged before or just vast. Um, and we know that we've got a lot of work to do. Um, so keep that in mind as, as you're going through the week. Um, and then, um, Another large concept that we want to introduce here is um, the fact that all of these workshops are things that the lobby is trying to build from. So um, we're trying to take this as a kind of generative session for figuring out how to move forward and give ourselves sort of um, actionable items. Um, and the way that we're doing that is that the kind of tiny goal of, of each workshop is to come up with a learning outcome. Um, and or learning objective. Um, and we're using that term intentionally. Um, those are the uh, ways that accrediting bodies like to um, give a kind of content um, guidelines to, um, to schools in order to, to accredit those schools, especially um, NAB as where we're taking this terminology from. Um, and instead, um, we're actually interested in developing these objectives for advancing architecture education um, in and beyond capitalism. Um, so all of the facilitators have been um, told about this and are asked to use their workshop um, as a kind of platform for developing that statement. And they're really gonna be about one to two sentences that just um, give us all a kind of collective um, goal at the end of, of all of this. Um, so the closing plenary, which is going to take place on this upcoming Saturday, um, will be a review of all of those uh, learning objectives that have come out of the workshops over this, this week. Um, and we will be working with the facilitators to kind of hone those in and then have a kind of larger discussion about what we think the, the main action points are that um, the architecture lobby can take on, but also architecture education in general can, can start to work towards. Um, so with that, I will pass it on. Um, hey everyone, I'm Rona Gendi, and I'm here to talk about what happens post ABC Summer School 2022. So the Architecture Lobby Academia Working Group sees the learning objectives that come out of the 2022 workshops as the springboards for ongoing development. So facilitators are invited to advance the ideas of their workshop in collaboration with the architecture lobby group in the coming months and years. So basically handing out their one sentence objectives for others to further. So we are planning to evolve the objectives into material for the 2023 ABC school for an open source library and more. Possible long-term outcomes include, but are not limited to 
architecture beyond capitalism education tenants. So these would include the ethics, principles, and values towards architectural edu education. So we want to push the learning objectives into collective statements and then create new standards for architectural education um, throughout the world. Um, guidelines for architecture beyond capitalism, learning, teaching, and organizing. So these would be the strategies for retooling coursework classrooms and the campuses with the roles and responsibilities, standards and systems, et cetera. These operationalize the learning objectives, breaking down the ingredients and processes of change from many to employ. Third would be the direct action architecture beyond capitalism education proposals. So these are the plans for specific interventions. These identify the actors and subjects of change and develop the substances, structures, and schedules for organizing and motivating. And finally, there is the architecture beyond capitalism educational visioning. So these are the speculative images, imaginings and images for alternative educational models. These describe the ideals of architectural education futures. And we want to ask ourselves, what would this type of education um, look like when we're organizing these aspirations? And now I'll pass it on to the next person. Great, thank you. So. Um, Jessica, I may take your screen share from you and pull up Luma and we can kind of do a little quick tutorial on the Luma platform. Um, and I'm going to put this in the chat for everybody. So let me do that real quick. This is the link to our Luma community. And again, this is where you can access all the Zoom information about all the events happening this week. Um, and I'll share screen here. Can everyone see this? Give me a thumbs up. Yes, awesome. Okay, so when you visit the link that we just put into the chat, it's going to take you to a page that looks like this. And this is just a quick little summary of what we are doing, what it is. Um, and you'll see something that either says like join the page, or if you are already part of the page, you can click this button that says open community page here. All right, and then once you're in our community page, it kind of has like a news feed feature. So there have been some announcements in the past that we've published here. Um, if you're interested in those, you're welcome to kind of go back and look through what some of those announcements were. Um, you can see on the right, it gives you a quick little view of any members that are currently active. And um, there's a member directory which shows you, um, it's actually really cool, like a map where everyone is coming from. Um, and I can see if I can pull that up real quick for us. So you can see where everyone is for, for the workshops this week. I think this is really, really awesome. And it's exciting to see such a wide representation from all across the world for this, this session this week. And then the key thing I want to bring up is this calendar here on the side. So this is where you're going to come to see all of the events happening. Um, as mentioned, we've got like, I think, 19 or 20 different workshops this week, um, each on a different topic, but related. So it's, you know, come to one or come to all um, whenever you're available and whatever you find interesting to you. Um, so today, after this opening plenary, we have the workshop online collaboration technologies and their implications for post pandemic studio learning and teaching practices. Um, that'll be today from one to three. Um, and then again, you can click into an event and see the zoom information to see how to join. At three to five today we have production studies perspectives on remaking studio. Um, that'll be a really, really fun one and then at five to seven we have collectivized pedagogies. Um, today. So again, you can come here to access this information. Uh, tomorrow we have on pedagogical transparency from 9 to 11. We have crafting an institution for free education, a San Diego case study tomorrow from 1 to 3. We have student organizing across still by project briefs tomorrow from 5 to 7. And we have free studio liberation as proxy tomorrow from 8 to 10. Um, and all these times are, that you'll see are in Eastern Standard Time, um, so to help with, with time zones there. On Wednesday, there's software skills licenses and dependencies from 9 to 11. 
Um, and then we have ours to hack and to own open source strategies in the pedagogy of potential from one to three. On Thursday, we have one of our few and uh, <laughs> in person events. Um, this is hosted by Tessa Ford and it's called the Night School Community After Collapse. So just the information about that, you can again go and click and, and look at that page. Um, 11 to 1 on Thursday, we have engaging communities in the design studio considerations for accountability from five case studies. From 1 to 3, we have rethinking property relations, politicizing site analysis. Um, and then from four to six Thursday, we have questioning the nature of status in architecture. Um, and then on Friday, we have our second in-person event, again, hosted by Tessa Ford. It's the night school free studio. Um, and she'll have more information about that in this event page. And then again, we have back on Zoom, decenter, deconstruct design from nine to 11 on Friday, community after collapse from one to three on Friday. Um, seeing, hearing, eating, drawing, and all of the above from 5 to 7 p.m. on Friday. And then Saturday brings us to the last day of the ABC session this year. So at 9 to 11, we have Together We Dream. Um, and then from 4 to 6, we have our closing plenary. Um, and this is really a time we hope to come back together and bring all of those learning objectives um, and bring all of the outputs that you all worked on and, and turn these into real deliverables, real strategies, real guides, um, tangible tools for moving forward with this type of effort. Um, last thing I'll say, there's a quick fun like happy hour thing on here. Um, me and Spen, another member in Michigan are gonna be hosting an in-person little happy hour. I encourage you all, if you find other people in your area, um, get together throughout the week, um, you know, meet up after a workshop. Um, I just think that'd be a fun thing to do um, to kind of carry this from, from beyond Zoom into the real world that we all actually live and operate in. Um, so I think that'll be a little fun thing happening. Um, all of these events, so have additional information when you click on the event page. Additionally, they have resources associated with them. Um, so if you come here to the library on the left, first you'll see here were all the announcements on the news feed. Second, you'll see a, a calendar PDF of the schedule, and I'll show you all that in a minute. Um, and then lastly, you'll see workshop resources. So these are titled by the workshop they're associated with. Um, so you're welcome to come and click into one of these, and there, there might be readings or PDFs, um, different things like that that are suggested from the facilitators for their sessions that they're, that they're hosting. Um, and then lastly, I'll just click over here to the schedule. Um, this is just another easy way to view it. If you're interested in this, this can be accessed by clicking here, and then you can download that PDF. So this is all in the library on Luma here for the schedule. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing, and I think we can open it up at this point to questions. That that concludes us talking at you and providing information and. Um, you know, I'd be happy to, to hang on here. Um, I, we have the Zoom open for another half an hour. So if you have questions, you're welcome to stay. Um, if you need to run, you know, do as you need. So thank you. Thanks, Natalie. And just to, to mention again, um, to stay with our, our Zoom etiquette, um, if you do have a question, type stack into the chat and um, we will answer questions in order. Monica. Hi, hi everybody. Nice to see all those faces again. Um, I have a quick question regarding copyright. Um, so Rebecca Renzo and I are hosting our session on a Miro board and we've uploaded already some of the references and literature there. Um, it's stuff that obviously we bought and screenshot or scanned and put onto the Miro board. And I just wanted to ask whether um, that's okay, or if we have to pay attention to anything um, copyright related. I think for copyright information, you'll have to look at the details of those documents. Um, different types of materials have different types of copyright laws and, and things associated with them. Um, the mirror boards will be kept to folks who have registered for the school. 
Um, so they won't be public. Um, so if that helps you kind of interpret that, um, I, I hope that helps answer that question. Yeah, thank you. Um, I guess we can just uh, claim it's for education purposes. And then if people do download or screenshot anything, then it's out of our hands, I guess. Yeah, I but think I just you can think about sure. this like, like a class. Yeah. 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 Cool, thanks. Sharon, you're next on Stack. Hi, um, I just had a question about um, kind of the role of the participants a little bit. Um, you know, not not including just like the organizers and the facilitators, but you know, the people that are kind of going through this summer school as as just participants. Um, I'm wondering, I don't know, just based on the explanation. Um, you know, I, I get that they're going to be participating in the, the Muto boards and kind of putting reflections and kind of their conversations and like whatever came out of the classes onto the Muto. Um, but how how are you guys imagining that the participants are being able to move forward in their learning from the ABC school? Like, are they going to have some way of understanding or knowing about uh, some of the resulting conversations from the organizers or the facilitators? Are you imagining that they're going to be, you know, part of the ABC school next year? Or, you know, what, 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 what was kind of the vision for that group or that cohort, um, you know, in, you know, kind of creating these learning objectives and participating, you know, where do you see them going next after, after this week is over? Can I jump in there? Um, I think there are two parts to your question. One is how during this week participants will be asked to contribute to Miro boards and the discussions. And um, basically we've let all the facilitators know that um, at least half of, of the session should be discussion where you are not just participants, but you're actively working for advancing the discussion, whatever. So, but just to say each, each session is organized differently. And so they will probably tell you how, when, and where, or you know, indicate that particular um, etiquette of participation. But but the second part for the future, everything you're suggesting is yes, yes, yes. You know, in, in some way, um, when you go back to your school or go back to your office, we expect. Um, and hope that the discussion um, will go forward and that when people make remarks that you think um, you could add <laughs> to in terms of a, a certain set of open up perspective that you're there. But more than anything, very specifically, the, the reason that we're trying to get a real concrete set of outcomes is so that there is ongoing strategies to which you participate in making that absolutely that's not just us coming up with that that's all of all of us working together on what those strategies are and just to say it is the case that most of the people who are organizing this year were participants last year um so there is that kind of passing on of the baton which um we hope happens again uh, i'll add to that a little bit and just kind of um mentioned the fact that we started this uh, first uh, year after the first um, studio really talking about this question of organizing um, and trying to build community. Um, I think one of the things that uh, was a lesson out of the, the first school was actually trying to figure out how to keep momentum going. Um, so what we're hoping happens is that um, by kind of turning this into a worldwide um, brainstorming session in a sense where we're gathering a group of people who are, are collectively going to be working towards um, changing architecture education. So in general, um, all of you all are, are equals in this. And so um, we, we hope that we can use the architecture lobby as a kind of channel for all of that energy. Um, so uh, please do continue working with, with us at the end of this is, is the bottom line. And I'll add just a little bit as well. Um, I, I echo all those things shared. Um, we've additionally a difference from last year to this year. Last year we really had separate like lecture type of sessions and then assignments, uh, and that to us felt way too rigid. And 
way too similar to how the university functions and is not what we wanted, a hierarchy that we didn't want. Um, and so this year, uh, I think, you know, as Andrea said, uh, just because someone's moderating the session doesn't mean that they're not on equal footing with you as someone engaging. Um, we worked with each facilitator to really structure the workshop as participatory. So um, they'll be sharing tools with you and strategies with you that they know of from their own experience. Um, but then each workshop has uh, some designated time for like co-creation of documents. So um, I know, for instance, some of the workshops I've, I've been helping develop, or, like we'll be doing a hackathon together where you'll get to learn about some like open source coding tools, um, or we'll be creating and learning about like ethics consent forms together. And you'll have those types of I like boilerplate information to carry back with you into your own education moving forward. So I think, um, you know, they'll be participatory. You'll have hopefully some tools and, and new things for you as someone who is perhaps a student or a practitioner um, moving forward with this. Um, and then the closing plenary will be really important to let's bring back all together um, all of the different outputs and strategies that we've developed throughout the week. So definitely come to the closing plenary on Saturday. Um, and we are, you know, like hoping to create like, you know, here's a list of, of strategies, right, or here's our goals for our own workplaces or our own studio practices from, you know, for the next six months or the next year, um, you know, and I think, as mentioned, we're, we're happy, we, we encourage you all to start engaging with the academia working group at the architecture lobby. Um, you know, or encourage you to help organize if you're interested in, in, in organizing next year's session. Um, if we, you know, decide at the end of this week collectively that we want to keep meeting as a group, you know, and, and doing that, you know, every couple of weeks or once a month, right, we're welcome to that too. So I think it's flexible and I, I think I'd like for us all to pay attention throughout the week to, okay, what do we want to take from this and how can we make this applied to our own situation? I'll add one more um, logistical piece. Uh, yes, our, uh, please, after this workshop, join the Academia Working Group if you're interested in continuing the discussion and working through the, the action initiatives as, as um, Natalie had mentioned. Um, our next meeting will be August 7th. And um, so we, we will continue this conversation at, through scheduled meetings and um, we'll put that, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have that as part of the closing plenary as well. All right, any other comments on the question? Okay, Tom, you're next on stack. Uh, thanks, Jessica. Um, I'm on the AIA national board and I'm former on, formerly on the NAB board, former president of ACSA. So my question is, how are we engaging the collaterals in this conversation? And should we put them you know, on the agenda in terms of what they're doing? Because a lot of these issues really come on to what they're supposed to be doing for us and with us. So any thoughts about the co collateral relationships with this? Can I say something about that? Um, um, we had imagined that that um, some of these sessions would actually talk about that issue. And we, we were thinking that there would be different scales at which studio would be disrupted, whether it was just um, in situ or in the curriculum or the curriculum within the context of a university and in the context of accreditation and in the context of licensure, you know, all, all of those um, institutions that you're recommending. Um, it hasn't really happened in this kind of ground up invitation, but I think we do know that the work for the future is very much how, what we're thinking of as disruptions, how they scale up and what institutions need to be addressed when, um, when this opens up to um, those who we, <laughs> we think are resistant, but maybe are not resistant. Um, and so I, I definitely think that's part of the next steps in the strategies. So if they've come from the sessions or not, that's where we need to go. Great, thank you. I have a direct question. Uh, do you guys mind expanding on what you meant by collateral there? Oh, well, the collaterals are the American Institute of Architects, the National Architectural Accreditation Board, uh, the Association of Collegiate Schools of Architecture, uh, 
AIAS, the student chapter of the AIA, uh, NCARB, National Council of Architectural Registration Boards, and now NOMA, which is great. NOMA, uh, National Organization of Minority Architects, has been added. So uh, those are the so-called collaterals of our profession. They're the organizations overseeing practice and education. Thank you. I think we also welcome others' responses to that. If, if anyone else has has thoughts on that question, yeah, actually, just to clarify, so collateral in this case is that a professional term? Uh, well, all I know is that's what they've always been called the the collateral okay. organizations of our profession. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm new to architectural lingo or the yeah. professional talk. Thank you. Alexandra, you have a response. Hi, here I am. Um, Thanks, Jessica. And I think uh, maybe as a continuation on uh, the comments here with collateral organizations, they are sort of just like US specific mostly. Um, so I wanna clarify that since we did look at a map earlier that was looking at a lot of international participants, I imagine that there are equivalents to our sort of US American collaterals, which are essentially just professional organizations that are related to and support uh, the sort of like structures or systems that are in place that organize architecture within the US. Um, so I, I appreciate the comment, Tom, and I would also maybe ask everyone outside of the US to consider equivalents um, and to also bring them to the table. Um, I think there's a lot that the US participants or collaterals can learn from our international uh, groups and cohorts. Um, that would be maybe something that I'm specifically interested in taking from this conversation in these workshops this week. Um, as someone who serves on the AIA Ohio board as an associate director, this is something that is pressing on my mind. How do I incorporate um, at a local level or at least at a state level all of the work that we're doing in these workshops directly to how I set up programming for um, the AIA's quote unquote, emerging professionals, which is a specific term that they use and apply and have defined. Um, so that's just some of my floating thoughts right now. Um, but thank you all for <laughs> letting me speak here. Thanks, Alexandra. And uh, Spen, I'm going to skip over, you're on stack, uh, but Lori has a, a response. So I will come back to you, Spen and Lori. You're, you're next on stack. Thank you. I just wanted to, um, I guess, kind of underscore the questions or the prompts that Tom was mentioning and thinking about. I know personally, I'm really in interested in this workshop and, the, and what the action items moving forward could be and thinking about how both within the US and globally, we start to put major pressure on structures that, um, are responsible for some of the metrics of how we teach and how we get licensure in order to really deal with the most pressing issues. So for me, I think there's so much potential, or I, I see the see the and hopeful at the end and on Saturday that that this could be, I don't know if it becomes a subgroup, but I'm really interested in meeting and working with people who want to make these kind of changes um, and the scaling up of these changes. So I'm incredibly hopeful. And so excited to be in a space with other like minded people, so I think those those organizations, whether we agree with them or not are critical to to force change to happen. Thanks, Lori. Um, Spen, you are next on stack. Hi there. Um, I just wanted to quickly jump in. Um, and try to represent as best I can some of the larger organization of the architecture lobby. Um, I am now the research coordinator. And so I've been going to lots of our different working group meetings. And I just wanted to briefly speak about some of them. 
Um, so in addition to the academia working group, we also have um, a group that's working on the Green New Deal. We have a group that is working on unionization and unionization efforts. Um, we have a group that's working on or kind of restarting actually the work that's been happening on cooperatives and cooperatives, cooperativization within the profession, um, looking at how small firms can kind of collaborate and participate together. Um, we have different chapters uh, of the lobby that are city-based, right? So we have a like a new chapter now that's opening in, uh, in Fort Worth, Dallas. Um, we have a chapter in Houston. Um, these are just some of the new ones that are coming up. Uh, we have a, a restarted one in Boston, a strong one in the Twin Cities. Many of them are, of course, based in the United States. Um, we have some that have established last several years in Canada. Um, and so these are just kind of ways in which you might be able to engage with the architecture lobby outside of also the academia working group and outside of, um, outside of what will happen this coming week. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of offer some of these other opportunities to participate with us, um, which, which you might be interested in. And to just this question about, um, about the collaterals, my own personal thought is like, uh, I've just kind of realized recently that the ACSA, the Association of the Collegiate Schools of Architecture, which is where all of the architecture education jobs are posted, they don't require that you um, list the salary of the job that you're that you're posting for, uh, and I think for a lot of our, I, at least I know in uh, in European and other uh, countries with like strong liberal uh, regulatory um, requirements, this is kind of outrageous. No, that you don't have this like very basic question about uh, transparency and which allows for people to. Uh, understand if they can even afford the job that they're applying for. So really practically, and I think maybe this might get raised at some point or I'll raise it, uh, this could be just one area that we could push on, um, which I hope to try to propose to the academia working group in, in the fall. Um, so yeah, thank you. Sorry, I, I'm just having my coffee now. Uh, this is very exciting. Um, thank you. Thanks, Brian. Um, are there any other questions before we depart the plenary? Andrea. This is sort of a direct comment out of the conversation we've been having, sort of tangential. Um, but I am uh, sort of thinking about all of this in terms of sort of three categories of approach. If we're talking about the collaterals, they're also kind of the actors in this larger equation. Um, then we have actions that we can particularly take. And then there's this, the subject matter or the content that we're also trying to change. So I think that when we're thinking about the learning outcomes as we go through the workshops this week, um, all of these are open to um, questioning and rethinking. So um, we're looking for content that, um, or we're, we're rather we're looking for objectives that would address all of those three things. So everything from the, the content or the subject matter to the actors that are involved to the, to the actions that we need to take. Thanks, Andrea. Um, organizers, anything else that we need to mention before we leave? I'll just mention that we have about 10 more minutes. Uh, so the organizers will, will stay around until 11 p.m. or excuse me, 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern time and uh, to follow up with any questions. Um, please take a look at LUMA, uh, the calendar. It has all of the sessions, the workshops, and um, of course the, the closing plenary will be this, this Saturday. Um, so we're very excited to kick off the week. We're very, um, we're thrilled that you all can be here to help uh, build this and um, build some action items in the end and to continue to work on those. So thank you for joining the ABC School 2022 and we will see you all throughout the week. Thank you.